reversed. Greetings, I'm Shad. And let's talk a little bit about the shovel as a weapon. How effective would it be? In what situations uh, would it excel at? And uh, does it really hold up when we compare it to other weapons that could be used for the same purpose? Um, before we really dive into it, it doesn't need to be said though, the shovel uh, of many different types has played an important role on the battlefield throughout history. Now, not necessarily as a weapon, but definitely as a tool and as a uh, backup weapon if it was needed. Early as the Roman period, they were using shovels to dig their uh, ditches for their forts, also putting in a kind of like battlefield uh, obstacles for the opponent, also to give yourself cover, setting up, you know, uh, pickets and things like that. Shovel has always been there for a good while. They especially excelled in World War I, where trench warfare was so prominent. And this in particular was where the uh, shovel uh, had uh, started to be used in combat uh, a little bit more because in the close confines of those trenches they needed a, a some type of weapon that was smaller and more usable in such close you know areas where you didn't have a lot of room around and so this is where the entrenching tool or e-tool kind of uh, came about. There were some earlier versions and in World War One they were more often fixed. It was by World War Two that a, uh, a fixed type of e-tool or trenching tool um, uh, came about that could be used as either like a shovel or they could turn it like this and it would be used as a pick. Uh, quite a versatile tool. You could uh, make your own dugouts for cover, also trenches and things like that. And they became pretty much standard issue for a lot of types of soldiers and were extremely useful and beneficial. And so in regards to their actual existence on the battlefield, yeah, the shovel has been around and oddly enough, we see more examples of the shovel as a combat weapon in modern warfare as opposed to historical warfare for the reasons that I'm going to explain, because uh, it is actually an interesting situation why we see shovels more used more in a modern kind of setting than medieval. And then after that, we're going to swing some of these around to see how effective they would be. And I've actually bought some so we could test. So this e-tool here, we have uh, a kind of... A this, there's the bigger shovel, we'll test that as well. But we also have, this is like one of those multi-tool camping um, uh, tactical shovels. Uh, I, it's not, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it an e-tool, it's a bit bigger, smaller than a full-size shovel, but I want to see how effective this would be as a weapon and a regular shovel as well, comparing to some other weapons. And I was able to purchase these items thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is Audible. Now, I can't recommend Audible enough. Audiobooks are just phenomenal. They're one of the great entertainment mediums of the modern day. If you're not trying them out, I really do feel you're missing out because there are just such incredible stories that you can get access to, like the new Audible original, Impact Winter. From executive producer of The Walking Dead and the writer of Pacific Rim, it's a totally new saga created just for Audible. It's presented in immersive 3D audio that dares you to pop in your earbuds and listen in the dark. The story is based in the near future where a comet hits Earth and blots out the sun, with beastly vampires emerging in a sunless world. The story follows two sisters, Darcy, who is a battle-tested vampire hunter trying to save the world, and Hope, who is desperate for life to be normal. So if you want to check it out and hear how these brave few fight to survive the Impact Winter and fight to live again, just visit audible.com slash impactwinter now. Go check it out. You can get access to it for free. And then after that, you'll get your first 30 days free. So there's a 30 day free trial. You get access to the Audible Plus catalog, which gives you all these great audiobooks. Then there are also self-help books, uh, sleeping tracks. There are podcasts. Audible's business structure is, is really good. I've been signed up for years. I have hundreds of audiobooks that I got for a fraction of the retail cost because your monthly subscription gives you a credit that you can trade for any audiobook on their entire catalog. And that's on top of getting the Audible Plus catalog part of your subscription. The value is phenomenal. I'm a customer, been one for years. I even have my own audiobook available as well, Shadow of the Conqueror. You could check that out. 
get access to it all, dive right in. It's a world of entertainment. You can enjoy it when you're driving, when you're relaxing, when you're working with your hands, when you're cooking, when you're doing dishes. But I enjoy it so much, you end up just listening to them for the sheer joy of it. Just visit audible.com slash impactwinter now. First 30 days free, Audible Plus catalog, monthly credit, really affordable audiobooks, absolutely brilliant. Go check it out. Thank you for Audible for sponsoring this video. Now we were just talking about how it's interesting that the shovel has become a more prominent weapon in modern warfare than in the past. Why on earth is that the case? I think the answer is pretty evident when you dive into it and you know the historical context. In the modern context, melee weapons aren't hugely prominent, okay? We have ballistic warfare, guns, automatic rifles, all those things just to have rendered a lot of melee weapons obsolete. But in the medieval battlefield, of course, melee weapons were all around. There was rage weapons, okay? Uh, we have war bows and crossbows, but there were ways to protect it against them much easier than modern warfare. In modern warfare, to get proper protection against gunfire, you basically need dugouts, trenches and things, and, and cover. In medieval warfare, you don't necessarily need that. You could have armor that could protect yourself against it, and you could close the distance to use some devastatingly effective melee weapons. And out of the arsenal that they had available, well, we're going to compare them, but just on the surface, you can see that there are some medieval weapons that would just vastly outperform shovels. Now, when I say, you know, when I'm talking about modern warfare, there's a lot of trench-style warfare in the Napoleonic era as well, uh, especially in the musket kind of eras. But the further you go back, you see less earthworks in defense aside from, you know, fortresses, castles and things still were around. But as a result, there was less need for a shovel uh, to be worn on you where you always needed a type of cover. And because of the warfare they're engaging in, they needed less cover as a result as well. So they could dedicate themselves to using weapons that were optimized for melee combat. And again, they weren't in trenches, so they had more room to move. Again, you might be closed off in a formation where you have, uh, you know, allies next to you. But in terms of in front, well, you have all the range you need to do some serious damage. So we can really see why the shovel actually came into more prominence in the modern day when cover is essential. And if you don't have cover, you make it by digging. How do you dig? Shovel. But then you have a tool with you that isn't a terrible weapon. It isn't the best. That's what we kind of will find, especially when you compare it to things like back to core. <laughs> like, seriously, which one's going to be better? But say in a confined trench, maybe the Bechter Corbin wouldn't be the uh, best pick. Yet at the same time, would it be better than other weapons that you could use in those close confines? Like a dagger. Well, it's a little debatable, honestly. There is one major difference that I think gives a knife an edge even over a shovel, and this is one of my clarifying criteria on how to determine if a weapon is better than another. I've done a dedicated video on objective standards in weapons, and one of those objective standards is the amount of energy you need to exert to produce lethal force. One of the massive advantages of knives and anything with a severe point, you do not need to exert a lot of force to do lethal damage with something like this. With a shovel, especially a trenching tool, as you can see, to do lethal damage, you do need to exert a lot of force. Now, it, it wasn't difficult to produce that energy, but the fact that there can be situations where you might be grappling and you don't have the movement or leverage to produce that energy, any weapon that you can produce lethal force with little energy, if you're grappling and you're right here, if you could kill someone with the weapon already touching the opponent, that gives you a massive advantage. That makes the weapon vastly better than one in which you can't do that if it's already touching, where you need to swing. So in all honesty, no, I don't think a trenching tool or e-tool is better than a dagger, but it's a lot better than nothing. And in actual fact, you could consider it a, a lot better than other weapons in the same situation. Might be why those other weapons might be really crap. Because it's a force multiplier. You've got to, 
point of leverage, you've got a blade and edge that could really cut in, you do have many different angles, and you've got versatility. If you, instead of cutting, wanted to resort to something that basically was a medieval weapon, a pick, and yes, the war pick, even one-handed, existed, right? Now, one of the differences is this is a pick that is made for digging. It's mostly blunt, but you could sharpen it up, okay? And you have a really deadly weapon. Does it have the same limitations? I think it, there are still limitations. And so I don't think it makes it better than a knife or a knife that's so big you could almost call it a small sword or maybe a short sword. That's inappropriate. Ah, oh, they already exist. A short sword. I've been talking a little bit about this recently. Uh, yes, I think this would have been a more effective weapon, even in trenches in like, you know, modern warfare. But the problem is, it's not a multi-purpose tool. And you have only have so much weight you can carry with you. And so this is why I think the E-Tool has become more prominent again in modern day warfare because of its utility as a tool. And so instead of carrying a, like a weapon that's Really, like, honestly, it's better than this, but yeah, it's a crap shovel. It's a really bad shovel. You could try it, use that is a terrible shovel, where this is a great shovel, and it's a good weapon. Might not be the best, but it's good enough, and so for convenience, your loadout, how much weight you can carry, the practical solution becomes pretty clear, and the entrenching tool is obviously more prominent on the battlefield as a result. Now, we talked a little bit already about how deadly would it be. Let's increase the size because, of course, it can come bigger. Now, in a modern context, but you might be able to get away with something like this. Something as big as this is it's too cumbersome, okay? Unless there was a supply car of some kind that brought these, you would just use it and you wouldn't use a weapon. But if you were needing to march and you only could take what you carried with you, Maybe they could get away with something like this, but a more standard size e-tool is vastly more common. And I'm not saying every entrenching tool was this size. There were ones with bigger heads, about as big as this even, but with shorter handles about this big that they would fold and carry with them and stuff. Uh, getting one with an even larger handle like this, that's what I was mainly referring to in terms of size. And then a full size one, you wouldn't really see it often on a modern battlefield, but it needs to be acknowledged that would definitely increase its damage and its capacity as a battlefield weapon, not necessarily in trenches, but I want to compare it to the medieval battlefield. How viable would a shovel be on the medieval battlefield as a weapon? It wouldn't be better than a spear. A spear, like the range, you don't need too much force to do lethal damage. It's so easy, like the spear is such a king of weapons. It's brilliant. Yet there are other medieval weapons in which a full-size shovel that has a sharpened edge might actually be a bit more comparable. For the utility of a shovel, this one was never meant to be a weapon. And because so, they've designed it purely, of, of course, to shovel, which gives us an actually rather sophisticated shape. Do you see the curve of the shovel, how it bends this way, right? This curve in the shovel is to prevent the steel from bending down when you want to leverage and pull up. And so you can even test it with a piece of paper. Curve the piece of paper like that, then try and bend it along the opposite plane, and it would need to curve out of that shape, all right? Having these ridges helps hold it in place, and that makes shoveling... <coughs> If this was a flat bit of metal, and it wasn't as strong, I think it's actually a pretty strong piece of steel, but there's a high chance that it would bend instead of being able to leverage the dirt up so easily. So shovels are great, they actually have a more sophisticated design, but it makes them more awkward weapons as a result because of edge alignment. It's not perfectly in line, with the shaft, not just vertically, but also horizontally. It like bends away, which makes striking with the shovel problematic at the least. What's interesting is shovels that were made to have some more combat utility, like the E-Tool, they're much flatter. 
but not perfectly flat for the reason we talked about. It gets so much more structural stability in having raised edges like this, but they don't raise them nearly as much, even on this multi-purpose camping one. So you can use the edges. Look, this even has a bit of a, a mini saw on it. Well, because they're designed for being able to cut through roots. Exactly. And you could kind of do that with a larger scale combat shovel. So if we could pretend that this one had a more combat oriented spade, is that what the head is called, a spade? I know a spade is a small shovel with a handle, but if it had a more co combat oriented head on it, okay, could we then compare it to some other weapons? <clears throat> a little bit. Compare it to say the glaive. It's a, it's a stick with a really good cutting end on it. Better thrusting, like, but you could point, give a, a stronger point on a shovel. These ones have minimal points, mainly to help for digging, but it does increase their utility thrusting, but you could make it, you could accentuate it even more than this, right? And as a result, a type of polearm shovel, it wouldn't be a terrible weapon. There's a lot worse ones, okay, that people propose as great weapons. It would be the bottom end. It's funny, recently I did a video on um, uh, making a tier list of medieval battlefield weapons, all right? Well, you look at classic, but also some uh, just ones that we threw in there for fun. It's a great video, check it out. The question is, where would a combat-oriented shovel, not this exact one, but with some of the changes I mentioned, go on that list? So it's not as effective as dedicated pole arms meant for pure combat, but we're making this ready for combat. It would have reach, it would have leverage, and it'll be really deadly. I would put it in the A class. I would consider a combat shovel an A class weapon, not S tier, but A tier, because there are so, like, it, it performs about as well as other weapons that we put in A tier. And so, it's like, in terms of shovel as a weapon, in a medieval, in a more medieval setting, you could throw it in, say, fantasy. It's not terrible! <laughs> it's just, I find it really funny. So if you combined medieval to other settings, even sci-fi, yes, a combat shovel could be justified, like what we actually kind of see in Warhammer. Because the, the shovel is a weapon in white, is the chain shovel? Yeah, yeah, it's the Kree, definitely Kree. Oz is uh, the Warhammer man, it's the Kree, he says. Do not interrupt my I am talking about full-size kind of polearm shovel. I think the more you go down in size, the less utility it has as a weapon. Like, look at this one. It's nowhere near as balanced as a, a good one-handed weapon. This is not, even though it should be this, by its size, it should be a, you know, one-handed weapon. This is a good size for one-handed, but it's just too awkward and unbalanced and too heavy. Yeah, like, ugh. I don't think it would be better than a mace in terms of armor penetration. There's, it's just still a thin bit of steel, thin enough, and so it doesn't have as much weight as a mace for armor penetration. It could... I think it would be better at armor penetration or impact through armor, so blunt force, than a sword, okay, but still too heavy. Like, this is... This is a, by its weight, it's a two-handed weapon, but because it's shorter now, not as effective. I got this one from one of those fun camping sites. Um, uh, it's multi-purpose. You can. There's a knife in here somewhere. Hang on, and it's just fun. Like, uh, where's the knife? Uh. Ah! <laughs> Do wield. Look at that. You screw on the other side, like so. You have one end to shovel, one end. Ah. No, it's a wasted it is a wasted opportunity. So if you wanted, as we kind of see in uh, 40K, Warhammer 40K, you could justify the shovel as a weapon in fantasy if you kind of, one, you can follow some of the same parameters that we see in the real world. Trenches, you, if you need a tool out of necessity that you carry with you, it's better a tool that can double as an effective enough weapon than a tool that can't. And, it's, and so, that gives the rate of the rise of the shovel. Yes, the shovel is, uh, fits that category quite well. And out of, I think, uh, better combat weapon than a hammer. It's more, got more utility in warfare than a ha hammer because of digging is more important than hitting nails. 
They're both used for trenches, but you can also hit nails with a shovel. Depends what type of hammer though. <laughs> I can hit nails with this. <laughs> like, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're trying to stab yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but you could do it. I, I think I think um, a, a hammer is a better combat warfare weapon because they literally more often exist as war hammers than a shovel. But that goes to show you that um, the <laughs> tools absolutely did exist as permanent battlefield weapons in a battlefield configuration, like the war hammer or pole hammer, back to Corbin. Uh, the bill hook is another farming tool that was adapted as a permanent battlefield weapon. The shovel, not so much because as great as it is, it has too many shortfallings in comparison to other weapons that can do the same purpose outside of ones that can be used to dig. When you need to dig, as we said, it's got an interesting place that it can fit. I mean, the war pick existed, right? And this is, if you sharpen it up, it's essentially a one-handed war pick. So in that sense, yes, primary battlefield weapon, as a permanent thing, and I could, like, the change is the, is the thing that, like, you can see why people preferred it, because you've got the pick action, and you've got the dig action right there. And you got the stab action. And you got the stab action, and, uh, and so, if someone developed the technology or a bit, because one of the things that really enable it, see this thread here, they had threads in the medieval period, they weren't precise, they weren't great, but say if you wanted to hand wave advanced threads that are strong and precise like this, that could switch the head, I, and, and because then you could have a permanent pick and a permanent shovel and then war pick, I could see the entrenching tool being uh, justified as a permanent, in a permanent place in a medieval fantasy setting. Imagine a knight, war pick E tool, the shield. Now, the shovel knight, <laughs> there's, there's precedence for it and the logic that you can use to justify it more than well enough. So there we go. This has been my thoughts on the shovel as a weapon. Let me know your thoughts. Hey, oh, look at this. I didn't even know I did that. So, like, so if you just wanted pick and no shovel. Oh, ho, ho. Dig it. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Permanent war pick, give it a bit of a longer handle, bit of a bigger pick, still usable as a regular pick, but a war pick, it, woo. Yes, they just need if they, if medieval people had this technology, they could do it or make it easier, stuff like that. Because I think someone could make a variant of this with medieval technology, but it might be too expensive then. But if someone, you know, yes, it could be justified. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Look forward to reading them, and I, of course, hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.